to part two of the UV uh, ST map tutorial. Uh, sorry, it's been a couple weeks. I've been pretty busy, but uh, more content will be coming a lot more in the next uh, few months here. So this is kind of uh, our part two to this video. I hope you guys have checked it out. Um, this is uh, the UV, uh, basically part one for the CG objects and how we can use it. Um, and you might recognize this pattern here, this green and uh, red that you saw wrapped around our CG objects. So we're going to actually take that concept and just do some of the things that we can actually do in 2D uh, with this. And we don't actually need any CG rendered out for this. Um, we can do a lot with an expression node and um, a couple different things we can do that are kind of interesting with it. So if we get straight to it, uh, we have an expression here. And the way we create this um, basically pattern is with this expression. So if you put in parentheses x plus 0.5 divided by width, and we see that that's going into the red channel, uh, and y plus 0.5 divided by height. And essentially what that does, so if we take out, if we look at the red channel and the width, so I hit R on my keyboard and check out what's happening, we can see it's creating a zero to one ramp uh, in the red channel. And if we look at the green channel, which is the y and the height, we're seeing a zero to one uh, ramp being created in the green channel. So naturally we get a red and green um, kind of combination, which is creating the yellow up here. Um, and that's what that's doing. And you're asking, well, what is that doing exactly? It's just creating this picture. Um, essentially, the way you want to think about this is it's a 2D coordinate grid. It's telling Nuke uh, where pixels are on this pattern. So if we just pull the picture, uh, really simple, just like a, a XY grid like this. Um, basically, if we are to create this pattern and we move some of the pixels, it's going to understand how to transform them. So if that's confusing you, uh, we're going to show it in just a second here, um, but that's kind of what this is doing. So we have that expression, and now uh, we're going to go and see what we can do with it. So if we have a normal picture, we just have a grid here. I'm going to close this stuff. And we have that expression over here, which is creating a UV coordinate. Uh, basically, if we apply a transformation to our... Uh, coordinates so I took a grid warp here and I just kind of pulled some of the points like this and then I've applied a transformation and kind of scaled it up and just rotated it a little bit if we plug that into the ST map we can see uh, that's actually being applied to our grid so even though these two effects here are going on this uh, picture um, it's being applied to um, basically through this ST map to our grid and you might be asking the question, well, why can't I just copy these uh, and just plug them directly into the grid? And you can. It actually gives exactly the same result. So in this instance, it's not that useful, but it demonstrates exactly how it's working. So no matter what we do to this picture, uh, it's going to be applied to um, our secondary or primary source. So uh, furthermore, we can look at how this actually starts to become useful. So we have this picture here, which is the same that we've been starting with, and another one. And what I've done here is applied some basic warps to them. So I've kind of shifted, you can see these dots here, I shifted them upwards. And if I open this grid warp, um, I've shifted these ones uh, in right uh, in the direction. So now what you can actually do is apply the ST map, and we see that this warp is being applied. But what I've done is put a dissolve between the two. So right now it's only looking at this one, but as the dissolve animates, so I've set a keyframe at zero and I set a keyframe at one on the frame 30, we can see that if I scrub between the two, we're actually morphing between these two transformations uh, seamlessly. So that's really useful because you could do a complex morph, have all of your predetermined um, positions set and kind of dissolve between a whole bunch of them. So you could have another one here. I could plug in this and uh, you know, keep, keep dissolving all the way between the, the uh, three or four or infinite positions that you have. So that's a really uh, awesome way that you can use that. Um, further, you can, and probably the most common use of these um, UV coordinate images is um, bringing in uh, or, or saving lens distortion profiles. So if you guys have done CG compositing, you know that we're pretty concerned with matching or removing, let's say, lens distortion from footage or applying a lens distortion to a CG object to match the footage. Um, so if you're solving a 3D track in another software and there's 
other softwares like 3D Equalizer, Synthize, Blender, they all have this feature. Um, you can remove uh, or solve the lens distortion and it will actually give you a picture like this, which is the uh, UV coordinates uh, with that warp uh, applied to it. So to give you a visual understanding, we have a checkerboard here with a simulated lens distortion. You can see that the lines are starting to curve around the edges. Uh, if we have it off, you can see they're straight. If we have it on, you can see that it's distorting around the edges of the frame. If we were to solve this camera in another software, it might give you a picture like this to export. Um, and essentially, if we were to plug it into an ST map afterwards, we can see that it's removing um, that lens distortion. So it's, it's basically doing exactly what we want. So that's kind of how these are useful. And if you start doing tracking other softwares um, or you're getting potentially from uh, another match move artist or someone who did your track, they should be supplying you with something uh, for the lens distortion that looks like this, most likely. Um, unless they can export the actual numbers, which is another way to do it. But that's just to demonstrate how that's kind of used. Uh, and so here's another way that is kind of interesting. Um, we have a basic grid here. And I basically all I've done is just taken the same expression and kind of blurred it. But I blurred it through a noise pattern. So we're actually blurring the coordinate system through a pattern. And if we look at the ST map, we can actually see that we're getting this like crazy weird effect. So that you could, you could create some holographic effects or you know other stuff like that. Um, and you can blur in the X and Y differently and stuff like that. So you can come up with different um, ways to use this. And if you guys have other creative ways, by the way, I'd love to hear in the comments. I'm sure other people would as well. So feel free to, to post it there. Um, but if we just check out the ST map, that's what we're getting. But if we do the same effect without the ST map, uh, we see that it's giving a totally different result because one is doing this to the image and one is doing it to the coordinates of the image. Um, so that's, that's how to think of it, basically. Um, so the last way and the most useful way, this is something that probably seniors can even benefit from um, or intermediate composers, I suppose, but uh, this is really useful and I use this on pretty much every CG uh, environment scene that I'm doing because uh, I, like, I like to work in a kind of Lightroom style uh, in terms of compositing, like it's kind of uh, just like doing my color grades and stuff like that in a creative way. And so if we have a, a basic CG scene like this, and you want to apply some color corrections to it, some secondary grading. Um, if we just check out the camera move first, I'll just let it play here. We have this kind of establishing sort of uh, shot, uh, kind of a helicopter, you know, flying over an environment type of shot. So it's a wide angle and we can see, I'll just let it cache all the way through here. Uh, we have a scene like that. So if I were to want to do a bit of secondary grading and direct your eye in a certain direction, maybe there's some subject matter, um, such as maybe this is a character walking up to an important object in our scene. And I want to and you know, uh, basically like a concept artist, you know, your eye is always going towards the brightest thing in the scene. And maybe we want to just make this area a little bit brighter. And maybe this area is a little bit less important. So we want to darken it. So you're not looking over in this um, basically empty area. And of course we can just do that with roto shapes, but those roto shapes need to stick to our scene as the camera is flying through like this. And a normal way that uh, a lot of people are doing it, and it's totally fine um, for most instances, is to just use a card, uh, card 3D. So you have like a card and you put a roto shape on it and you plug that into a camera and then you could kind of draw your shape and it's gonna stick uh, in the scene like that. Um, but sometimes you want your, your, your alphas to actually have the same perspective and actually stick to the CG um, in whatever shape that it is. And that's why this is really useful. So if I just show you the problem here, if I go to the end of this comp, I've done some color corrections. So if I go before and after a couple of these, you see I've kind of brightened this area a little bit, keyed out the highlights and brought them up just a tiny bit. And then I've just darkened and done some secondary grading, which is kind of creating a natural vignette effect and is kind of drawing your eye in the direction of uh, the subject. So we're, we're looking in this direction because we have a little bit more bounce light on that hill and a little bit less light in this area. So that's fine, that's all good. But if we scrub through, we see that that's not working and we can see that there's some weird colors floating around uh, and that's because our mats aren't tracked. So like for example, this roto shape, 
it's basically just not sticking and that's not what we want. So we're gonna go back to our technique and create this expression. Same thing, uh, but what you can do beforehand, we're gonna basically project this onto a 3D scene. So if I look at the 3D geometry, this is the same geometry uh, from that render. So we have the 2D render and we also have the 3D scene itself. So if I kind of zoom out here, it's a little bit hard to tell, but this is the same scene that we were just looking at. So we can see the, the uh, spheres here. Uh, if I zoom down, we can see some spheres and all those little objects that were sitting there. So this is the same scene as this. And what we want to do is project this pattern onto that uh, scene. And as we know, this pattern stores the movement of whatever it's doing. So if we project it and stick it onto the scene, essentially we'll be able to just stick any roto shapes we want anywhere we want and um, have a lot of flexibility and speed, which is the most important thing. So essentially what I've done here is uh, create the expression and we wanna put a crop beforehand and put the crop beyond the borders of the frame. And what this does is actually gives this um, pattern a bit of overscan um, and that's gonna help uh, when we project it. And you'll see why in just a second, I'll demonstrate. Uh, but we want that crop beforehand pulling out uh, and you'll see that dotted line on the, on the outside of the frame if you hit Q on your keyboard to make sure you have the overlay. Uh, another thing we wanna do is make sure it has a solid alpha because we're projecting it um, it's important to have a solid alpha. So I've basically just created a shuffle node and put the alpha to one by pressing that little white uh, button there. So now if we look at that in the 3D view, it's not the best representation, but we can see uh, this pattern is sort of being projected. Um, one other thing to note um, is to make sure you guys have the crop off um, for the project 3D. So uh, if I look through the render view and I hit tab, we can see this is what this is doing. And if I just zoom back a couple frames, so I just kind of scrub back, we can see that pattern is um, basically extended beyond uh, even what the camera was seeing on the frame they're projecting on. So we're projecting on frame 89. If I go back to frame 72, we'll see actually um, beyond what that camera's seeing. So um, one important box to check off is the crop. So if I turn that back on, this is by default. So you see by default um, from the frame, 89 looks great you know we're getting our pattern projected but as soon as we zoom back um, you know we can't have our roto shapes going beyond um, the edge of that uh, projection which is not what we want we want to turn that off and we also want to project only on the front of the geometry and the last thing don't have any of these set because you'll get some weird um, kind of artifacts and stuff like that um, so that's how you do it front turn off the crop and make sure you have this crop so we have that overscan. you see if i disable this um actually you can't really tell visually but um, basically uh, the math is not the same exactly so it's like stretching the pixels uh, versus having the detail uh, outside of the frame so just make sure you have that and this and now that if we pre-comp that out we're basically done so now we have this pattern and i can scrub really fast now you see that because this is pre-comped um, we can scrub really really quickly and it's not using um, 3D, it's not loading this whole 3D scene anymore. We've just created this 2D video. Some of the, the render settings, by the way, uh, you wanna make sure to render out 32-bit float, and you also wanna make sure the compression is set to none. Those two settings are really important um, for the math um, because we're storing a position, and usually those kind of utility paths, especially this one, you're gonna want the 32-bit and no compression. Um, and I've done a couple tests um, with this and it is definitely necessary even to turn off the zip compression. Um, so if we check out our result here, we have the image. If we want to just take a checkerboard picture and just stick it in the scene, I'm just going to transform it down, put it in a random spot, and then plug it into the ST map, make sure we're set to RGB. And now if I hit play, you see that it's automatically tracking to our scene and I don't have a large um, projection setup anymore. I don't have to load and do all of this again for every single projection I wanna do. Uh, I can just put this stuff wherever I want and it's gonna stick and wrap around our geometry and have the perspective. So as we hit play, we can see it kind of, it kind of wraps. So essentially we're gonna take the same principle. We already have that thing pre-comped out and we're just gonna apply it to our roto shapes. So I have that, uh, that image here and I have our CG scene. 
I have those same roto shapes that I've done. So for example, I have this roto shape here that brightens this area. It's a very subtle effect, but it's brightening this area. Uh, but just before uh, we use it in the mask of the grade, we're applying the ST map, which is going to apply that motion to this alpha. So if I hit A and I look at it and I scrub through, you'll see automatically when, when it's not enabled, it's not doing anything. And when I enable the ST map, uh, it's sticking to the CG scene. And essentially also one important thing that is kind of a gotcha uh, and, and you can mess it up pretty easily because it's default is you want to make sure to turn off uh, this, uh, this clip too. You want to make sure it's set to no clip. Um, and the reason for that is uh, the frame that we've drawn it on. So I drew it on frame 89. And we can see I drew it a little bit outside of the, the frame of the video. And if we have it set the format, um, we actually get some weird like stretching. But if I turn on no clip, it'll actually maintain what was outside of uh, that area. So always make sure to do that with your roto shapes if you're doing this uh, kind of tracking with these um, EV coordinates. Same thing with the radial. So if you want to stick, for example, a radial um, in the settings of the radial, you want to make sure it's set to no clip. So if I look at that alpha, we can see all those rotos are sticking to the scene. I can look at this alpha. I, I use the radial up here to brighten, and you see that it's sticking to the scene. And that's essentially the idea. So that's a really useful way to use it, and it kind of opens up a more creative way to just project a ton of different things without having to you know, have a ton of different projections, which is gonna slow down your script. And that's all what, that's all it's about really is speed and efficiency and getting a good result. Just one important thing I forgot to mention um, is that there is a little bit of a limitation with this technique and that if there's a lot of overlapping objects, you might have some kind of problems. So I've just done a quick roto shape here along these two geometry and I've kind of drawn a roto shape and I've used our S, uh, ST map you'll see that if I scrub through, it sticks and there's really no problem um, in terms of this um, angle. But if I were to kind of expand that roto shape to the edge of this tube, so let me just double click this, and let's say uh, I put it on the very edge um, and just kind of put it like this. Um, and it's on the inside, we can see it's inside that cylinder, so it's fine, but if we scroll through, um, and let me just make sure I have no keyframe. We scroll through, we see it's actually projecting through our geometry and onto that ground that's behind. So it's not occluding itself. And the projectivity occlusion is not that great. So it's not going to be able to, to do that. So um, we might have to separate that piece of geometry out or use an ID to kind of remove it behind. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. If there's a lot of overlapping objects, um, this technique is not the greatest, but um, if it's just rocks and pebbles and stuff like that, or um, for soft color grades, this is still a very good uh, method. So just something to keep in mind. So essentially that's the idea. If you guys liked the video, hit like, I really appreciate it. And um, if you wanna check out the other video, if you haven't seen it, I'll put it in the description below as well. And uh, thanks so much.